All right. Well, Happy New Year, everyone. I uh, hope everyone had a, a good New Year celebration, if you if you did indeed celebrate the New Year at this time of year. <laughs> Um, we have a few things to get through, uh, so let's begin with the tech update. Rao, are you ready? Yes, I am. Happy 2022 to everyone. Um, I put the link to update the technical update uh, 205 in the chat. I'm going to share my screen now. So um, overall, this week has been uh, a little bit of a light week because of the holidays, but uh, we do have an updated uh, code on the LLBM testnet. NutZipper just updated uh, a, a few minutes ago the LLBM testnet with the latest version of the code um, that has this uh, simple protocol that he worked on uh, that he implemented. And then uh, Greg has re completed his review off. Um, in addition, the latest code also integrates um, uh, Dennis's uh, work on improved history. Uh, so both those things are now on the LLBM testnet. Please go ahead, test that. Um, and I know over the last week or two, a couple of people in the community have been testing it. Um, thanks to them, Mr. Zunfei and Linda287, I believe. Um, but uh, we need more testing on this uh, uh, code as we uh, uh, get closer to the finish line on this uh, leaderless block merge. So please, whatever... Uh, uh, you have in terms of whatever testing sub testing you can do, please go ahead and do that on the leaderless uh, block merge test net. Um, the, for those, uh, this is just to repeat, the, the design document is here at this link. Uh, I think I just want to make sure you're able to see it. Okay, yeah. Um, there's that. And then uh, Dennis is taking some time off this week, but he did uh, uh, complete making the changes to his PR. And he's now going to be implementing the tests uh, uh, in the next week. There are a couple of other items that he may look into, but they seem to be low yielding in terms of the overall impact uh, on either performance or storage. So probably those are not something that he really needs to get to. There are, there are more higher value um, tasks uh, that he'll probably be moving on to. So that's what's going on. Stas is continuing to work on his uh, graph Z refactoring uh, uh, PR. Um, he's got some failing tests that he's trying to resolve at this point in time. And Will is also continuing to work on the POS contract. Um, there has been a little bit more conversation about the uh, what we can do to support staking in terms of separate rewards wallet. Um, we will have a conversation about that in the tech governance uh, meeting this Friday. So uh, hopefully we'll get that, uh, that and any other requirements from a staking pool standpoint, uh, identified, documented, and then uh, we'll see which of that is easy enough to implement now versus what has to wait for later. So that's the uh, status on that. I think that's the overall, um, tech update for this week. Are there any questions, comments um, from anybody? I hope people had a chance also to look at the um, the CASP, the end of year talk about uh, uh, actually correct by construction Casper. <laughs> um, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at that, uh, I, I believe that was um, published. Or, uh, Daryl, is Daryl here? Is he on the call? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, were you? I sent that to you. I don't know if you're able to publish it yet. I don't think I've had a chance to do that yet. Okay, no worries, not a problem. Uh, so when when uh, when Daryl gets that published, it's it's worth taking a look at because we talk about how to actually do correct by construction. What correct by construction really means? <laughs> um, I think that was from last Friday, right? It was from last Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, that's correct. So, uh, so if you get a chance, take a look at it. It's, it's it's worth your time if you're interested in Casper things. Uh, all right. Uh, if there are no other questions about um, the uh, the de the um, technical update, um, I think that Raphael has a, a note for all those who are interested in Dappy. Raphael, did you want to give us a, a quick update? 
Yep. So um, yeah, I'll share share my screen. So I'm Raphael, uh, lead developer lead developer of the Dappy project, which is a web browser that uses the blockchain instead of uh, centralized services of the DNS to provide uh, higher uh, trust levels and accuracy. And uh, so, of course, what I'll say does not uh, so uh, is not linked to the co-op. So I speak. Uh, uh, on behalf of uh, my company and myself. So yeah, we are preparing an ICO for uh, 2022. So it should uh, uh, start uh, approximately one month from now, maybe even less. So if some people are interested, just to know more, uh, they can visit the website, go to the ICO section and fill out these forms, this form. And uh, then they'll be contacted back uh, through email. And we'll have, of course, documents um, to that uh, explain um, uh, what would be the structure of uh, the potential investments. So um, yeah, just head to the, uh, so if you, if you have already uh, filled out a form from DAPI about some investments, you don't need to do that. And if you are if you are already part of the new newsletter, um, maybe this will not work. So feel free to send me a, send me a message uh, anywhere uh, on email, on Discord, or uh, on Twitter, and I'll uh, reply. So yeah, dapi.tech slash ICO one, and um, and that's it. Thank you, Raphael. I appreciate uh, that. It looks like you're making good progress. I did have a question. Are you accepting REV as a form of payment for investment? Yes. So, um, yeah, we should be accepting uh, REV, USDT on Ethereum, USDC on Ethereum, and also the same, uh, the same one on the Binance Smart Chain. And uh, yeah, so uh, six, five or six different uh, crypto. Awesome. Good to, good to hear. Um, thanks. Thanks for the update. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, moving on. Daryl, do you have a, a week in review? I'm sure it was probably light if there is one. I do, and it is very, very light. Um, so let's see here. Here's the week in review of what I have for uh, Thursday, December 30th to today, January 5th. Um, I don't believe there was a governance committee call. Um, I wasn't able to attend and I don't see anything in the log. Um, on Thursday, there was a work study uh, with the review of Rolang tutorial. Um, there was no climate and coordination RCAST on Friday because it was New Year's Eve. Um, Casper Standup reviewed partitioning with Casper Consensus. And uh, let's see here. Um, there was the, in the RDEV member co-op planning, uh, discussed multi-sig and development environments for DAP developer bootstrap framework and boot camp instant sev environment. Um, on Tuesday in the communications working group, um, they went through the working group log, Nora added links and notes there, uh, shared social media schedule document for 2022 overview, and Ian, Raphael, and Nora discussed the Wikipedia writing process and worked out the outlines for the co-op and Greg. Um, they also discussed progress on our chain's slogans and the DAPI white paper. Um, also on Tuesday in the DAP developer work study, they discussed on-chain rolling development and cross-chain IBC protocol. And uh, today in the active member, there was a Tampa meetup planning, multi-sig wallet development, DAPI ICO. Um, at the end of January, um, our chain cloud virtual servers and implementing RGov scripts and JavaScript for local development. So yeah, I guess this week was actually pretty active, I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. Well, I know that you were busy over the holidays and um, you cranked out a, uh, an overview um, uh, slide deck for the whole Archain ecosystem. And I understand that uh, you might be willing to give us a kind of meta level uh, um, version of the pitch deck. You want to you want to uh, uh, take that on? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's see here. I'll just share my screen. 
All right, so here goes. So this pitch deck was the result of requests for a high level overview of the Archain ecosystem for investors. Uh, Dazzle represents decentralized advertising for Web3. Archain Publishing manages data for a decentralized future. And Archain is the layer one blockchain platform that Dazzle and Archain Publishing utilize to bring global scale dApps to the world. We are living in a time similar to the dot-com era of the mid to late nineties. There was a massive investor exuberance around any startup that had dot-com at the end of it. Despite the fact that Silicon Valley declared the internet must be free, investors felt that these new types of business businesses would figure out how to, mo how to monetize eventually. It took around 10 years, but shortly after the turn of the millennium, advertising poked its head out onto the web and eventually ended up being the source of funding for what are now the largest companies in the world. Today, the blockchain universe has declared that the web must be decentralized. And similarly, investors are throwing money at projects with the hope that blockchain decentralization will be monetized somehow. Any blockchain dApp still must respond to the internet wants to be free norms, yet must somehow provide a solution for the upfront fees required to run dApps on layer one blockchain platforms. This means that once again, advertising could become a solution for this current conundrum, but advertising must work with the demands from the blockchain universe. Next generation web three advertising should not engage in any form of surveillance, coercion to surrender personal data or the engineered behavior modification techniques employed by current social networks. Blockchain demands that not only does information want to be free, it must remain in control of the user. Another problem with the current state of blockchain platforms is the fact that they were built as payment networks first, with the idea that data could be added to the network later in some other way. This means that all current blockchain platforms cannot support placing large data files directly onto the core layer. It is kind of like trying to build a computer by starting with a cash register and imagining that somehow you'll figure out how to attach a computer onto it. Yet another problem with current implementations of blockchain technology is that they're very energy intensive. As Elon Musk highlighted back in May of 2021 in a famous tweet, proof of work based blockchains are very harmful for the planet. In addition, climate change has dictated that humans need to coordinate like never before. And we desperately require coordination technologies that can facilitate global collective intelligence in order to develop global self-awareness as a species. So there's some problems. And here are the solutions. Dazzle is a wholly owned subsidiary of our chain cooperative. With the new interest around decentralization, we have an opportunity to shift humanity away from surveillance capitalism and enslavement to a new personal and community empowerment economy. We can reshape what advertising represents. Rather than surrendering our data to empower a handful of corporations, the advertisee is empowered to benefit from the advertiser without surrendering our precious data. Dazzle is also set up as a Web3 dApp incubator, providing tools and assistance to deploying dApps on our chain. Also, a wholly owned subsidiary of our chain, our chain publishing provides the tools and the platform for data on chain. Large files can be stored and retrieved with user control. This means a revolutionary approach to NFTs where not only the certificate of ownership, but the file itself is stored with it on chain. Any enterprise that requires data on chain will benefit from our chain publishing's tech. And the platform that allows all this to happen is our chain, the data centric layer one blockchain to drive web three. So here's some use cases. We have um, John Smith who wants to mint an NFT. So he mints his NFTs on the Archain publishing platform. He lists them in the Archain publishing marketplace and on other marketplaces. Um, and unlike other NFT platforms, his NFT and the corresponding asset are together stored immutably on the blockchain. The marketplace uses Dazzle to add a decentralized advertising layer to its operations. Because John offers an ad on his page, he'll get a cut of the ad revenue. Here's use case number two, decentralized cloud storage. John wants personal legal documents stored in the cloud. John's files are only accessible with his private key. 
Dazzle allows them to earn revenue with ads. Advertisers don't need to know John's identity to target him. John posts football videos to a social media DAO. He shares with a football group by putting files in the football folder. Files are only available to his group in that DAO. The football group allows Dazzle ads. Football companies can target ads without spying or invading privacy. Group members earn ad revenue. Here's a self-sovereign ID use case. John has sensitive medical information that he wants to protect. He uploads to an Archain publishing folder that only he and authorized medical professionals can access. His local government pays Dazzle to sponsor its public service announcements. So those are three or four use cases that kind of demonstrate how all three of these um, entities all work together. So Web3 is all about reducing intermediaries to empower direct connections. The model is based on small transaction fees in order to foster these connections, in a nutshell. Um, so what's the market size we're talking about? As Greg says often, people engage on the internet with data transactions at a massively larger scale than they do with payment transactions. The markets for file storage, NFTs, or essentially any need to store files is tens to hundreds of billions of dollars. Online advertising has risen in this century to represent the largest companies in the world. It has eclipsed oil. But instead of plundering the earth for its resources, these companies plunder our data to reap obscene profit and power. Web3 is about moving away from these centralized silos and decentralized advertising will play an important role. So our chain is the only blockchain that can provide these Web3 solutions. It's the only blockchain that scales as you add hardware. It is the only blockchain that can store large files. Our chain is poised to become the platform for Web3. Uh, so to gain customer acquisition, Dazzle and Archain Publishing will attract Web3 projects that require these tools. A few key relationships are in the works and once the solution is observed by the public, a snowball effect will occur. Um, so here you have the core team. Um, you have Rao Bamadad Patti, who is the CTO of Dazzle. Um, he's a board member and VP of product and platform governance at Archain. He worked for Xerox, projects funded by IBM, Sovereign Bank, and DARPA. Uh, has bachelor's in electrical engineering, MBA at the Indian Institute of Management, MS in computer science from NJIT. Steve Ross Talbot is the CEO of Archain Publishing. He is the XW3C chair. Yes, you heard that right. Um, may, maybe many people don't even in, the, in our community don't even realize that, the, that, that uh, Steve Ross Talbot held that position. Um, he's currently the professor of distributed computing at Kingston University in London. And of course, Greg Meredith, president and founder of Archain Cooperative, architect AT&T, Microsoft BizTalk, Roll Calculus and Roland Creator co-author of several W3C standards. Um, and then we have the appendix. I guess I won't read all through this right now. A little statement on Archain's energy efficiency and a little table that shows Archain's superiority against other layer one blockchain platforms. Um, now we also had a whole bunch of uh, uh, financial data that we're not gonna share in this um, setting. Um, but we could share at a later date, perhaps in a Friday session. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you. I appreciate that. Any questions or comments for Daryl? Um, I had a couple of just minor comments. Um, I think depending on what companies you're alluding to in the beginning, you could say that they're the largest in history, not just in the world. That's true. Um, and also, I just had a, it's a very minor point, but I just had a question about the spelling or the capitalization rather of DAPs. Is it usually small D with a capital A yeah. or are, is it just now just the ca capital D? I'm, I'm just curious about that. No, the standard, the standard um, spelling is small D capital A. Okay. So that might just be something in case we want to change that, but it's super minor anyway. Great job. Okay, yeah, thanks for, thanks for that, Nora. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, and yes, this pitch deck is continually being iterated, so um, I will make those corrections today. 
<laughs> yeah. Also, I have never made any claims about being an architect for AT and T. Um, so if you could oh, correct, okay. correct, I would appreciate that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. Very fluid, and um, um, so so in the end, Dazol is um, just. Um, the, the simple idea behind it is making advertisers pay for transaction fees. Is it right? Uh, there's a little bit more to it than that. Um, um, yeah. So, so, so in particular, the, the, the most significant part of the little bit more is that um, when, when people are um, using a given DAP um, by viewing sponsored content, they are earning Dazzle token, um, but that Dazzle token is being consumed to, uh, um, to, to account for their usage of the app. If they view more sponsored content than their usage of the DAP um, uh, you know, needs to be paid for, then they begin to earn Dazzle token. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so that, that that's one piece where it's it's more than just uh, having advertisers pay transaction fees. There's a there's a whole there's a whole tokenomics around um, uh, um, blockchain based uh, or DAP uh, DAP based uh, advertisement that uh, that we go through. Uh, another example is. Um, uh, smart contracts that um, can be put in place so that um, a user can provide consent for um, a, a sponsor uh, or a DAP to sell their data on to others as long as they get a cut. So like one of the things that, that happened uh, with Facebook and many others is that they would sell data that they mined from users without giving the users any cut in those sales. And our view is that um, as, long as, as long as people get the right to negotiate, they might in fact give up their data. But if people are mining their data surreptitiously or without real consent, um, then that's a, that's a different, that, that's basically nefarious and immoral. Um, but we believe that people would be more than happy to uh, provide their data um, um, uh, either, you know, of, with full disclosure or in some anonymized form if they could participate in some of the economic rewards. Uh, and so, so that's another way in which um, the, the tokenization and the data transfer fit together. Does that make sense? Yep. Cool. Yeah, I'd like to also add that um, um, a, a, in many ways, I think that the dApps themselves that come to utilize Dazzle and Archain Publishing are going to have their different approaches and ideas. Um, for example, the dApp that I'm working on, um, the advertising model that I'm, I'm um, picturing uh, is entirely community-based. So there's no selling of data. There's no kind of um, giving up of data, personal data, um, and yet the, the advertising will be more targeted and better targeted than what you're getting from, from Facebook. How, how many times have you clicked on a Facebook or, or Google ad? Um, I'm gonna guess probably not that often. So not only is the business model harmful for humanity, it also doesn't work very well. Um, so I think that there are going to be, um, better solutions. And I'll just add another thing. I came to the whole idea of decentralized advertising. Personally, I came to it kind of kicking and screaming um, because I used to subscribe to Jaron Lanier's approach to advertising, which is that it's perfectly evil. <laughs> um, and, um, and surveillance capitalism. I'm a huge Shoshana Zuboff fan. Um, uh, but what I came to realize is that if we put our heads in the sand and just allow this to continue to occur, or if we try to tune out, as Jaron Lanier suggests, um, it's not going to work. Uh, if we're going to solve the problem of surveillance capitalism and centralized advertising on the internet, we have to confront it head on. 
we have to create an alternative to make the others obsolete. So that's my, 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 my kind of soapbox statement about why Dazzle. Yeah, I agree. But I think like when you have billions of users, even if it doesn't work almost at all, you're still talking about millions and millions of dollars, you know? So I think it's just yeah. the size of the operation that makes it worth it, even though it's not very effective. And also, I think it's more about creating awareness of things rather than getting people to click on stuff, like just getting people like acclimated with a certain image or a certain brand. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think sure. that's why they do it. But I agree with you that it's horrible. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, th thank you very much, Daryl. Uh, appreciate it. Um, uh, unless there are any other burning comments, we'll move on. Uh, so we had a, um, a board meeting, uh, lots of good discussion in the board. Uh, not a lot I can talk about here in this venue, but if you'd like to hear about um, uh, the things that uh, were um, uh, discussed in more detail, please uh, come to the um, the Friday call. There are also a couple of other items related to um, fundraising and other things that uh, are very good news that we'll be talking about in the Friday in the Friday call. So please uh, come to that if you're interested. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, what am I missing, guys? What What did I leave out from our PR call yesterday? Anything else we need to cover here? I think you covered it. I, I would just say that in addition to the, the regular Friday closed door session, we will also have the, um, the China community closed door session a, as well. So that'll start back up since we're after the holidays. That's correct. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, yeah, we are going to be running a users group for um, RPC. Uh, several artists have come forward with uh, strong interest in using RPC as a, a publishing platform for their work. If there are artists out here who would like to do that, um, please feel free to um, contact myself or Lilia or Steve Ross Talbot um, uh, to, to throw your name in the hat to be a part of the, the, uh, the users group meeting. Um, Steve, I also wanted to see if you'd like to reach out to the uh, the folks in the GBA that were looking at uh, publishing NFTs if, and see if they'd like to be a part of that user's group conversation. Yeah, good, good point. I'll, I'll be sure to do that. Awesome, awesome, very good. Um, okay, then, um, are there any questions, comments, concerns from the, uh, from the community? Greg, I'm not sure if you would like to mention uh, you would like to have another session of the folks from the UK. Uh, the same thing yes. we before last year. That's right. Yes. We're, so we're going to be reaching out to the academics that we worked with last year uh, in the workshop um, and to run a similar kind of workshop to get them up to speed. Essentially, what we're trying to do is to create the, the relationships so that uh, we can get third parties to um, uh, validate the claims that we have been making about our chain's performance and scaling. Um, and other attributes. So we, we would like now to get to the point where we have um, we have good independent verification of uh, all the claims so that uh, people can can you know they don't have to rely on us. They can either run the code themselves um, uh, or they can they can uh, get expert opinion from uh, respected folks in the uh, computer science community. I think that will also really help with the Wikipedia articles because we can't really say too much without having sources for it. Sure, sure. Yeah. So that'll be great to have those. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Yeah. Um, I should also mention that uh, we are going to be launching the uh, the two uh, sub shards for the subsidiaries uh, very very soon. Uh, and I'm hoping to be able to work with uh, with the, the Rev Define team to uh, add those um, add those shards 
to rev define either to have you know instances of rev define that work specifically with those shards or to act, roll them up into rev define so that you'll be able to see not just rev transactions but rpc transactions and dazzle transactions uh, so any questions about that all right well thanks everyone i really appreciate your your time your attention and i feel very very good about 2022 i think it's going to be the year of uh uptake for our chain uh, and uh, especially um at the enterprise level so i think we're we're going to see some really good things happen um please uh, stay safe everyone uh, stay warm and we'll see you on the other side